the 20th century was an era of technological development and new opportunities, and not only for men, but also for women. Purposeful, intelligent, bold, they created world history step by step. Our today's heroines created their stories in the sky, opening new horizons, not only for their contemporaries, but also for the next generations of women. Raymonda de la Roche. Today, on 8th of March, we celebrate International Women's Day, celebrating the strength, resilience and beauty of every woman around the world. By chance, on the same day 111 years ago, a woman challenged the whole world and became the first licensed pilot in history. Her name is Raymonda de la Roche. She was born in 1882 in Paris. At birth, the girl was named Eliza Raymonda de la Roche. As a child, Eliza was fond of sports. Later, motorcycles and cars attracted her attention. Growing up, Eliza became an actress and took the stage name Raymonda de la Roche. In the 1900s, close attention around the world was paid to the Wright brothers. The invention, creation and control of the world's first successful aircraft, inspired many young pilots. In 1908, Wilbur Wright came to Paris to demonstrate power flight. He suggested that the audience fly as passengers. One of the ladies who accepted this exclusive offer was the young actress Raymonda de la Roche. In fact, this flight was a turning point in the life of the actress and laid the foundation for her passion for aviation. After that, she turned to Charles Voisin, a pilot and designer of aircraft, and asked him to teach her how to fly. The actress began her flight training in October 1909 in Chalon, about 140 kilometers east of Paris. Since Voisin's plane housed only one person, Raymonda mastered control by watching him from the ground. She showed excellent results and after successfully handling the aircraft on the airfield, Raymonda de la Roche set off on her first flight on October 22, 1909. It did not last long, the actress landed after 270 meters. Officially, Raymonda de la Roche became the first woman to pilot the plane. Eliza continued her flight training and achieved excellent results. On March 8, 1910, the French Flying Club officially granted Raymonda de la Roche a pilot license. She became the first officially licensed female pilot in the world. The pilot actively participated in air competitions and shows. At one of these events, held in St. Petersburg, she met Tsar Nicholas II. Struck by her flying skills, the Tsar personally congratulated Raymonda. Not all air shows were successful. On one of them, a strong wind forced the French pilot to land near the barriers that separated the airfield from the crowd. A little more and the collision of the aircraft with the audience would be inevitable. In Reims, participating in the competition for first place among women pilots, she had a serious accident, due to which Raymonda de la Roche had to stop flying for two years. Recovering from car and plane crashes, she began to fly in 1913 again. Perhaps it was the best year of her aviation career, she won the Coupe Femina, a French award for women pilots. In this competition, Raymonda made a record flight at that time at a distance of 323 kilometers, which, unfortunately, ended in a mechanical breakdown. Fortunately, Eliza remained unharmed. Then she broke another record, and this time for the highest flight altitude. Raymonda de la Roche flew 4,500 meters above the ground. However, the First World War ended her career. All commercial aviation was stopped to focus on war efforts. The French Air Force banned female pilots from participating in the war as well. However, it did not stop Raymonda de la Roche. She became a military driver, took army officers from the rear to the front trenches. After the war ended, Eliza continued to fly. In early 1919, she broke another record, this time flying at a record altitude of 4,800 meters. Unfortunately, her career ended very early. Since she was also a talented engineer, Raymonda de la Roche wanted to become a test pilot and help aircraft manufacturers create aircrafts. On July 18, 1919, she and her colleague went to the airfield in the Crotois to test an experimental aircraft. When they were about to land, the plane went into a very steep dive and crashed into the ground. The accident killed both the pilot and Raymonda de la Roche. She was only 36 years old. Yet, even 100 years after her death, her legacy is alive. A statue of the famous pilot is installed at Paris Le Bourget Airport. In memory of Raymonda de la Roche, the whole world celebrates World Week of Women Aviation and the same week as March 8. Bessie Coleman 
Bessie Coleman became the first African-American woman to conquer the sky. Known for her tricks, she received nicknames, Brave Bessie, Queen Bess, and the only racial woman aviator in the world. Bessie Coleman was born in Atlanta, Texas, on January 26, 1892. She grew up in a large and noisy family, among 12 brothers and sisters. In her youth, Bessie helped her mother collect cotton and wash linen to earn additional money. By the age of 18, she had accumulated enough money to enter the university in Langston, Oklahoma. However, after the first semester, she had to leave college, since there was not enough money for further training. At the age of 23, Coleman moved to live with her brothers in Chicago. In 1915, she entered the Burnham School of Beauty and became a manicurist at a local hairdressing saloon. Meanwhile, her brothers served in the army during World War I and returned home with stories about how they spent time in France. Her brother John teased her because French women were allowed to learn to fly on planes, and Bessie was not. These conversations woke Coleman's desire to become a pilot. She filed documents with many flight schools across the country, but no school accepted her because she was African-American and female. The famous newspaper publisher Robert Abbott advised her to move to France, where she could learn to fly. A purposeful girl began attending French language courses in the evenings, because a statement to flight schools had to be written in French. Finally, Bessie was admitted to the Codron Brothers Aviation School in Le Crua, France. On June 15, 1921, she received an international pilot license from the International Federation of Aeronautics. Coleman's dream was to have her own plane and open her own flight school. In order to earn money, she gave speeches and showed films about her air stunts in churches, theaters, and schools. She refused to speak in places where African Americans were discriminated against. In 1922, she made her first public flight. A feature of the Brave Bessie flights were her famous stuntman tricks. People were fascinated by her performances, and she gained popularity both in the United States and in Europe. Coleman toured the country, giving flight lessons and performing in flight shows, and urged African Americans and women to learn to fly. Just two years after starting her flying career, Bessie survived her first major plane crash. In February 1923, the engine of her plane suddenly stopped working, and it crashed. As a result of the accident, the pilot received serious injuries, a broken leg, several broken ribs and cuts to the face. Fortunately, Coleman was able to fully recover. In 1925, she returned to performing dangerous air stunts. The hard work and support of the patrons helped her accumulate enough money to purchase her own plane. On April 30, 1926, Bessie made a test flight with mechanic William Wills. Wills was flying a plane, and Coleman was sitting in the passenger seat. At an altitude of about 3,000 feet in the air, a wrench was stuck in the aircraft's engine. Wills could no longer control the helm, and the plane rolled over. Unfortunately, Coleman was not wearing a seat belt. At that time, the aircraft had neither a roof nor any protection. Bessie fell out of an open plane and died. The plane crashed a few meters from Coleman's body, Wills also died. Her death was a tragedy for thousands of people. Brave Bess dreamed of giving hope for achieving her dream to women and African Americans, and she succeeded. In 1931, the Challenger Pilots Association in Chicago began the tradition of flying over Coleman's grave annually. In 1977, African American female pilots created the Bessie Coleman Aviator Club. In 1995, the Bessie Coleman postage stamp was released in memory of all her achievements. And although Bessie Coleman's career ended in a tragic plane crash, her achievements continue to inspire people around the world. Sabika Gurkchen Turkish pilot Sabika Gurgcan was the first woman in her country to receive a pilot license, and is considered the first female combat pilot in the world. In the 1930s, she became a symbol of modernized Turkey and the new horizons that opened up to its female citizens. By flying alone over Turkey and the Balkans in small biplanes, wrote the independent newspaper in London, she became Turkish Amelia Earhart, a local celebrity wearing a hat and glasses. Sabika Gurgcan was born on March 22, 1913 in Bursa, a city in northwestern Turkey. When she was child a child, she lost both of her parents. The girl lived with her older brother. In 1925, during a visit to Bursa by President of the Republic of Turkey Atatürk, 12-year-old Sabika, thanks to her resourcefulness and perseverance, managed to get acquainted with him. The girl said that she wanted to study and asked the head of state for help. 
Ataturk, with the permission of his older brother, became her adoptive father and took her with him to Ankara. Sabika, together with other foster children of president, went to school, and then entered the most prestigious university in Turkey. In 1934, after the adoption of the surname law by parliament, Ataturk assigned his adoptive daughter the surname Gurgchen, which means, heavenly. The surname turned out to be prophetic. Sabika's future became closely connected with heaven. In 1935, Ataturk and Sabika attended the official opening of the Bird Turkish Flight School. Gökçen was delighted with the paratroopers of both genders who took part in the air show as part of the ceremony. When Ataturk asked her if she would also like to do this, she replied that she was ready to start training even right now. With the support of Ataturk, the girl was credited as the first female student. Soon, she received a pilot license. After that, together with her classmates, Gökçen went to the Crimea for advanced training courses and a diploma as a teacher of a flight school. She performed her first individual flight in 1936, and this achievement was enthusiastically covered in the Turkish press as the personification of new freedoms available to all Turkish women. Ataturk also allowed her to begin training at the Turkish Military Aviation Academy as a combat pilot. In her memoirs, Gurgchen recalled that before that Ataturk tested her, asking her to press the gun to her head and pull the trigger, and she did not flinch. Gurgchen trained on bombers and fighters, and she also participated on standard flying military exercises over the Aegean Sea in 1937. In the same year, she took part in her first and only assault flight, the bombing of the Kurdish uprising in the province of Tunjeli. After this operation, for her courage, she received the Medal of Honor of the Turkish Aviation Association. In 1938, Gurgchen made a historic flight around the Balkans, which lasted five days until her plane failed due to mechanical problems. This mission was discussed all over the world. After the death of Ataturk, Gurgchen was forced to leave the army. By that time, there was no official law allowing a woman to work in the armed forces in Turkey. She was later appointed head coach of the flight school at the Aeronautical Association of Turkey, where she served until 1955. By the age of 50, Sabika flew around the world and wrote the book A Life Along the Path of Ataturk. During her life, she flew a total of 22 different types of aircrafts, bombers, fighters, sports and acrobatic aircraft and others. During its flight life, Gurgchen flew over 8,000 hours, of which 32 hours of combat flights. She received many awards, medals for merit and honorable distinctions. Istanbul International Airport was named after her. Sabika became the only female pilot on the poster of 20 Most Famous Pilots in History, published by the US Air Force in 1996. Sabika Gurgchen made her last flight at the age of 83, paired with French pilot Daniel Acton. The pilot died at the age of 88. Despite the difficult conditions of her time, Sabika Gurgchen showed that a woman can show acts of bravery not only on earth, but also in the sky.